Hey, double portion. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my six minutes. <laughs> six minutes, Dougie Fresh, and you're on in the car on the way home from work. Um, I had a thought yesterday. Today is Tuesday, 2 22 February 22nd of 2022. Um, yesterday, I had jury duty, so I had to fulfill my civil service, go downtown, and, and serve. Uh, uh, be part of a jury and as I was sitting in the in the courtroom going through what you go through when you go to jury duty um, I just began to say okay what can I use from this experience to put on the tape number one jury duty it's a civil service it's a privilege to be able to do that it, they, how they say it's a, a responsibility as well as a privilege and so that was, that was one concept one of the things as the defense attorney was telling their case they got to go first well, the judge spoke then the defense attorney and then the attorney for the defendant spoke up one of the points that I wanted to let us see when it comes to going into the physical court but understand that we operate in the courtrooms of heaven so one of the things that stood out to me was the the um, the defendant does not have to testify and as jurors we have to be able to, you know, it's his right. He can testify if he wants to, but he can choose not to testify. And that, him choosing not to testify um, should not weigh in on whether or not the jury finds him guilty or not guilty. You can only find him guilty or not guilty based on the facts. So how does that fit into our Christian life? Even, you know, the, the district attorney, the state, had to prove their case beyond a shadow of a doubt, beyond beyond a measure of doubt, um, prove that what the, the allegations against him were true or he would be found not guilty. How does that fit toward us? That the adversary, the accuser of the brethren, he comes and he has his case well laid out and he just knows that he's going to win. But when the blood of Jesus comes against him, and that's why we need to get a better understanding, renew our minds to what it means to be found in Christ, of what it means to have the blood of Jesus covering our sins. And understand this, that when Calvary, when Jesus went to Calvary, all of our sins were in the past. We just living them out and acting in them now. And what we need to do when we get a better understanding of that, we will no longer operate with a sinful nature, operate from the, the core of sin consciousness, but we will operate from the core of righteousness consciousness. Because the flip side of the fact that the blood of Jesus covers our sins is that the blood of Jesus causes us to operate as the righteousness of God in Christ. So let's take off the religious blinders that say stop sinning that's trying to focus on uh, behavior and let's put on the the glasses of calvary that calvary was there for us to not sin when we really understand all of the elements of calvary all of the elements of the blood of jesus and what he did for us when we get a better when we renew our mind like that then when the accuser of the brethren comes we can stand with boldness and assurity with a clear conscience. See, that's the thing. One of the reasons that we can't stand that our conscience is convicting or really Holy Spirit is convicting us. There's something in our conscience that's saying, um, you out of line with. So when we allow Holy Spirit to dwell within and produce the fruit of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, meekness, kindness, gentleness, self-control. When we allow Holy Spirit to dwell within us, then we have hearts that don't condemn us. We have hearts that don't convict us as we um, allow Holy Spirit to dwell within, as we renew our mind with the word of God, as we allow God to be God in our lives. And so I just wanted to, that, that was just something that really, really, I'm like, I was sitting in a natural court, seeing how the courtrooms of heaven concept and principle could fit to us in the kingdom. And, and so to those that are attached to double portion kingdom ministries, I put it out there that as kingdom citizens, we have a responsibility to get to know the constitution. Now, yes, we can go and get it like, and like the young man that was on trial yesterday, you can go and get a, a law, a law team attorneys, then they know the law, but 
as believers, we are the whosoevers. We are to know the law, but the law is the word of God. It's not a religious thing. It's not beating you over the head with the law. Jesus fulfills the law. So as we get a better understanding of who Jesus is, why he came, why, and all that other stuff. And under, let me, let me, this is my last nugget and I'm right at six minutes. The Trinity of God is God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say God, Jesus. Jesus was his name when he came here. He was Jesus, the Messiah, who was fulfilling the role of God, the son in the flesh that came to redeem mankind. So that's, that's a who I know that's a nugget. I don't know how to make that more clearer in this little few minutes that I have, but that's something for you to think about. The Trinity of God is God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. All three of them are God. It's just the role of him as father, him as son, him as Holy Spirit. That way they all three exist at all times. It's like a marriage. There's a husband and a wife. They're a team. And, and even though the, the husband isn't here and the wife isn't there, they're still a couple, right? Holy Spirit as well. So God, I thank you for this six minutes of just, just reflecting on jury duty in the natural and what it means to us in the spiritual. Help us um, to understand Jesus in deeper depths and higher heights, even this year being our year of understanding the depths of faith. How about if we under we, we shore up our understanding of the depths of faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior? That's one of the definitions of faith is the leaning of our entire personality in complete trust and confidence in Jesus Christ. So God, we thank you and we praise you for our faith being strengthened in the Lord Jesus Christ, for us getting a better understanding of how to shut down the accuser of the brethren by being found in him, in Christ Jesus, as in Ephesians, all of the in him text, in him, by him, in whom, as we get an understanding of what it means to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, because we're seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness, we're being transformed. You're getting the glory in our lives in Jesus name. Amen. Catch you on the next video. I went a minute over.